Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video in conducting a two-way ANOVA with replication using the data analysis tools in Excel. When we think of a two-way ANOVA, we think of this type of ANOVA, the one referred to as with replication in the Excel data analysis tools. I have separate videos that cover the ANOVA single factor and the two-factor ANOVA without replication. But here we'll be looking at the two-factor ANOVA with replication, and I have fictitious data loaded in this Excel worksheet. And you can see here I have two modalities, group counseling and individual counseling. And then across the top, I have substance use, depression, and trauma. And each one of these are levels of one independent variable that's looking at the focus of the treatment. The scores here would all be from the same instrument, and this would measure symptom level, with a higher score representing more severe symptoms and a lower score representing less severe symptoms. So before we run the two-factor ANOVA with replication, we want to do our best to test the assumptions in Excel. And of course, in this environment, we can't fully test the assumptions, but we can get a general idea if we are close to meeting the assumptions or not. Outside of the assumption of independence, of course, that's going to be a factor of the design. We're going to be testing for outliers, homoscedasticity, otherwise known as homogeneity of variance, and normality. And we're going to make conclusions about these assumptions by visually inspecting charts. There is a way in Excel to calculate the Levine's test of homogeneity of variance. I have a separate video that covers that. But for this video, I'll just be using a box plot to analyze homoscedasticity. So let's start with the box plot. I'm going to select substance use over to trauma and then all the way down to row 31, so all the scores. And then in the ribbon here in insert, I'm going to go to insert statistic chart. And you can see I have a the histogram option and the box and whisker option here. I'm going to go with box and whisker. We also refer to this as a box plot. And you can see it provides information on the substance use, depression, and trauma scores. And we'll look at the intraquartile range. And that's the range that's depicted by the rectangle here. And we want these to be fairly close. This will help us determine the homoscedasticity or heteroscedasticity. So homoscedasticity would mean that the variances are roughly equal, and heteroscedasticity is when the variances are unequal. And you can see here that these are fairly close, so we would say that we have homogeneity of variance, or homoscedasticity in this case. From the same box plot, or these three box plots, we can also look at outliers. And you can see there's no scores below or above any of the whiskers in these box plots. So if I were to move over here to say the depression variable, you can see the first value is 51. I'm going to change this value of 51 to 81 because I know that will create an outlier. So now I have 81 instead of 51. You can see there is a point that appears here and the value is 81. So we know that would be an outlier. Of course, the value in there initially was 51, and that does not res represent an outlier. So I'll delete this box plot, and next I want to try to evaluate normality. And although there's no comprehensive way to do this using Excel, I can look at the histogram to get an idea if the data are normally distributed. It's important to note here that we're looking at the normality for each combination of the levels of the independent variable. So for example, substance use and group counseling. We would be evaluating just these scores for normality. And then for individual and substance use and depression and group and so on. So there'd be six groups we want to evaluate, six groups of scores. 
we want to evaluate to see if they are normally distributed. Now these are relatively small samples, just 15 for each combination of the levels of the independent variable. So I'm going to use a histogram to evaluate this. So first I'm going to select substance use and group, just the scores in there, the 15 scores. Insert, and again insert statistic chart, and this time I'm going to select histogram. So if we only have three bars here, three columns, and this does not appear normally distributed. If I move it over to depression, this appears normally distributed. And move over to trauma, this may be normally distributed. Again, it's difficult to tell with just three bars. And I want to run the same test for the levels of this independent variable, the focus of treatment, and the individual. So I'm going to drag this selection down. And we can see this appears to be normally distributed. Moving this over to depression and individual. These scores appear normally distributed. And then looking at trauma and individual, again with just three columns, not easy to tell, but this does appear to be normally distributed. So overall, there could be some violations of normality. However, ANOVA is robust to violations of normality. So I'm going to proceed forward as if these assumptions were met. So now I want to move to data analysis tools. So I'm going to find that in the data ribbon up top. And to the right, you can see data analysis. If you don't have this option, just go to File, Options, and then under Excel Options here, Add-ins. And down here, you can see where it says Manage Excel Add-ins. Just click Go and then check off Analysis Tool Pack and click OK. And you'll have that option available. So I'm going to click there. And you can see we have the three options for ANOVA, single factor, two factor with replication without. I'm going to select two factor with replication. This is what this dialog looks like by default. The input range is going to be all of these variables and the scores. So from A1 all the way down through D31. Now this does require you to input the rows per sample. In this case it's going to be 15 because we have 15 scores in group and 15 individual. I'm going to leave the alpha set at 5%, 0 0.05. That's a very popular alpha value in the social sciences and the output range I'm going to set to F3 and then click OK. So as you can see we have a fair amount of output. Up top you can see two-factor, ANOVA two-factor with replication. That's the, the statistic that was performed. Then we have the summary and below that we have ANOVA. So taking a look at the summary we have the count this is for group, and then here is for individual. So for group, we have the count for substance use, depression, and trauma, the sum, the average, and the variance, uh, with a lot of digits displayed to the right of the decimal. Sometimes it's useful to select uh, the average and the variance for, in this case, group, individual, and for total. And then go back to the home ribbon and just display two digits to the right of the decimal makes it a little easier to interpret. So if we look at the averages for group across the focus of treatment independent variable, we can see that the value 48.13 for substance use stands out as the lowest, uh, not only for group, but also for individual. And if you want to look at the totals, again, it might be helpful to add them to that list in terms of formatting there. It's just two digits to the right of the decimal. You can see for group it's 51.82 and for individual 50.89, so fairly close together there. Then moving down to the actual ANOVA results, I'm going to reduce the number of digits displayed here for the F value, the F statistic, the p-value and the f-critical value. I'll move that down to 
three digits to the right of decimal. And you can see the first row we interpret here is named sample. And this would be the group counseling versus the individual counseling. It's just referred to as sample. Columns would be the uh, depression, trauma, and substance use levels of the independent variable focus of treatment. So you can see that for the modality for individual or group counseling, we have a p-value of 0.434, or 43.4%. And of course, the f-value is below the f-critical. So here we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. We would assume there's no difference between the group counseling and individual counseling scores. Now for columns, that's the focus of treatment. We have an F value that exceeds the F critical and a P value of 0.004 or 0.4%, which is below 0.005 or 5%. In this case, we would reject the null hypothesis. And we would assume there is a difference between those scores. Because we have three levels of that independent variable focus of treatment, we don't know where that difference is. We just know there, there is a difference there. Post hoc test would have to be performed to identify where the difference is. And then we have the interaction effect. And this is an important feature of ANOVA. This is one of the reasons that ANOVA is so powerful is because it can look at the interaction between two independent variables. In this case, modality and focus of treatment. In this particular case, we have an F value that's lower than the F critical and a P value 0 0.165, 16.5%, which exceeds the alpha. So we do not have a statistically significant finding here. So we would say there is no interaction effect between modality and focus of treatment using these fictitious data in this Excel worksheet. I hope you found this video on performing a two-factor ANOVA with replication in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.